Um, hey, welcome to the Vintner Series for April of 2014. I'm here with my co-host, Ed Marciana. When are you going to have a talk show, Ed? When do I have a... As soon as somebody wants me to have a talk show, I'll have one. Let's do one. Let's do Let's do our own talk show. Okay, let's do our own talk show. You know we're doing it gonna, now, but... We're going we're gonna to build... My dad wants to build a studio on the other side of this room, okay? And I'm going to put shag carpet with those 60s chairs like they oh had in Merv God. Griffin, okay? Yeah, I swear right. to you. Yeah. And he wants to interview... A bunch of our Armenians whose parents went through the genocide, he wants to document some of these stories. And he's going to come up once a week, or once every two weeks, sit with these people for hours and talk about it. I said, okay, so we'll make the studio, and we'll do a pilot for you, the Masiana show. You want to cook it? We'll make a, you want a kitchen studio? We'll make a kitchen studio. Oh, yeah, I could do that. Sure. I want to do that. Because I always wanted to do a, a cooking show where you use computer graphics to go into the food to see what happens to it when you... Which is, I think, is a great idea. I do too. It's just that it cost computer graphics cost so much money now. Yeah, still, I mean, but still, I mean, you, if you could actually see what salt does when you when it permeates the meat or permeates the vegetable, or when you steam yeah, something right. versus fry it versus something else, it's chemistry. It's well, it is. Yeah, of course, it's chemistry. But more importantly, I think if you can get a visual representation of what happens, you'll remember it. I think you're right. Unless, of course, you're one of us. Thank you. Come on, man. Okay, we're ready. This, I can't look at. Oh, yeah, the there we go. Man. Well, actually, you're in front of me, you idiot. Um, roadside, <laughs> red. roadkill red. Yeah, I mean, how could you not want to call it roadkill red? Please. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, it goes with roadkill chili. Yeah. Actually, this is a great wine, and, and I, it's a brand new vendor. Never spoke with them. They've got two wines I really, really like. One is their Zin, and this clearly has Zin in it. Absolutely. Yeah, really. <laughs> But it's got a little Syrah and I think one of the Bordeaux varietals in it. But this, I think this is it is still young. It's got a lot of fruit. It's got a little bit of oak in there. Wow. But I think it's just going to be really fun to watch. That's delicious. That's a beautiful bottle of wine. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, it's not, you know, it's interesting because it's got this really effusive nose that you think is going to be a big fruit bomb. Right, it's yeah. going to knock you over the head but with no, all this stuff. But it, in, the, in, the, uh, in the middle and finish, it, it really just... Elegance out, yeah. You know, and it's very elegant tannins. It's gonna be, it's gonna age nicely. And I think it still tastes very young. It's a 2011, but 17.99 on the shelf, 11.99 on a reorder. That's a, that's a killer wine for that price. Yeah, I'm doing a 95. I think it's delicious. I'll match that 95. And, it, and since you think it's a killer wine, we'll call it Roadkill Red for the roadside red. Thank you. And why did the chicken that. cross the road? To get the other side. Ah, the roadside red. Now I get yeah, it. You know, and, I, and I, I doesn't look like he made it actually, but so <laughs> <laughs> judging from that picture, but uh, yeah. All right. So when we were in France, 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 you know, you know that when we got there, we had 20 days to spend. I had to move a kid around and stuff, but I had only booked two nights in the hotel. And what did you sleep on the roadside with so we, the, with the red? roadside red? <laughs> but we landed in Lyon, France, and we were sitting there going, "Okay, where's get the computer out and get the hotels.com? Oh, no, no. Where are we going next?" Yeah, that's funny. And we did it the rest of the trip, and we had a blast. But we went right through all these districts in the Languedoc, Peepole. We went through uh, Corbier. We went through all this stuff, and it was really fun. And I tasted the Peepole when we were down there at one of the tastings we did. And very good, and this is not from that particular selection, but this is a great example. I, you know, I never had one I didn't like. I mean, they're just so delicious. And they're fun. They're just fun. Mm -hmm. and, and one of these wines that you walk into a wine shop and you're not going to buy, oh, Peak Pole, what is that? You know, this, the guy has to sell you this wine. He has to say, hey, you know, this, you got to try these, right? And then you take it home and you go, wow, that was really fun. Delicious. Absolutely delicious wine. I mean, I've been drinking these wines for 30-something years. It's, it's grown by... A, a, a grape that's a household uh, word in my household, a uh, grow man sang. Grow man sang. Grow man sang. And uh, it's a delicious grape. Why we don't grow that here, I don't know. You know, it, but we don't. And, and a lot of times they will they will blend columbar in, uh, with grow man sang in this area. But this is 100% grow man sang. It's got a little more acidity, a little more oomph to it. It does. But um, this is, I, they're fun. And I, so what'd you serve it with? Uh, well, this is because of the acidity. I would, I, you know, you could stand this up to raw oysters or, 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 or a base. dish I did last week, which was a scallop in a in a grapefruit beurre blanc. Oh, that'd be something. That was that. That'd that, be really good. With topped this. it off with a little uh, Thai uh, pay, uh, bas basil, and it was killer. This is good. Yeah. I'm in the '96. So I, this is one of the better ones. And I, I gotta say, the first ones that we, we tasted years and years ago. They were thinner. They were more acidic. They weren't as right. elegant as this. But well, this they're clearly... just—they're just learning. They're just learning their trade better. And uh, this is a killer wine. I'm doing a 95 or six, whatever. I don't, I don't know. Who's keeping score anyway? Uh, I, I give up. 
Another blockbuster, uh, another blend, but this is from the Central Coast. And this is our friends, this is Syrah Merlot Malbec. Okay, now that's a bizarre blend. You wouldn't have done that 10 years ago, even 15 years ago. You wouldn't have done that. Well, yeah, but you know, I still remember the OMG Syrah yeah, Cabernet Franc. Yeah, but that was Franc. still kind of recent that history. Was so you think good. That, you think at PV Wines and Spirits there would have been a Syrah Malbec Merlot no, blend? No, 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 no. no that not, would have happened. Not, not then. It's called Silver no. Buckle. Uh, you know, it's from the Central Coast, probably playing off that Paso Robles, uh, you know, country thing. But yeah, similar nose to the roadside red, but uh, a little more, a little more fruit in there actually. Actually, I think it's got more fruit in the mid palate, mm -hmm. but also a substantial wine. The wine that I would definitely buy a few wow. bottles of and hold on to it for a while. You know, it's got some. This got is some short soccer. ribs and uh, short ribs, beer, right beef on. Beef bourguignon, delicious. No, not beef. I'm sorry. We had two. Incredible beef goulashes, one in Hungary and one in Vienna. Well, if you're in Hungary, you better get great goulash. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the home of goulash. You know? uh, the, okay, I'm telling you, we we traveled all over. I drove, I drove 2,000 miles on this trip. Are you kidding? No, 2,000 miles. When were you not in the car? Did exactly. you sleep in the car? Maybe you didn't have to get a hotel. <laughs> and I'll tell you, it was a breeze, but we ended up in Budapest. And of all the places we ate in all those towns, Vienna, all the way through Paris, the best meal we had was in Budapest. You know, a little bistro, Michelin rated, didn't even know, walked by it, looked cute, went in, wine shop, mm -hmm. had horseradish soup. Unbelievable. Absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. And Sandra had the beef goulash, and my and daughter had pumpkin uh, gnocchi, and it was, the whole meal was off the charts. So, and I had an egg rebicover with it, which was really, really good. That can be, those could be good. They can be a little daunting, but they can really be pretty good. good. Anyway, I'm doing a 95 on this as well. Why did I bring that up? I give up. <laughs> It's uh, twenty ninety nine on the shelf, twelve ninety nine on the reorder price, and I would I would buy a bunch of this because I think this wine will reward you in, over the next ten years. Mm. Man, so much fruit. Yeah. Now, last but not least, my buddy, your big friend, Mr. Pedroncelli. Yeah, Jim Pedroncelli, who turns eighty two on Saturday. Really? Yeah, or or Monday. I think it's Monday is his birthday. And this, this reeks of Gewürz and Riesling. Mm -hmm. It doesn't tell you what's in it. But One of the nicest Gewürz guys Gewürz. I've ever met in the wine business. Well, what was fun was when we had Montgomery in here, Paulson, and we were talking about all the stories about Pat Paulson, and then he told that story about Jim Pedersen making the wines in the early days Yeah. And, and sitting around and having a chat. And this got a little bit of bubbles in it. I think just... But that nose... I haven't mm. smelled that kind of nose in a long time. I know. It's really it's, fun. It's very Gewürzy. I think it's probably got some Shannon in there, and, and just mm -hmm. it's just a really good, solid white wine that you can serve with just about anything. It's a great blend. They did a nice job bouncing because sometimes those wines, when you get those Gewurz, they get overpowered. They, they get overpower, overpower, uh, powering. Yeah, exactly. And this is 16, nice and dry. Sixteen ninety nine in the shop. Eleven ninety nine a real order price. Killer wine for twelve bucks. Absolutely. I'm doing a ninety six. Mm -hmm. Ninety five for me, but really. Really fun to taste, and, and I'm, I was happy to do business with the good old Pedro mm -hmm. and Mark Abraham, who's been representing him for how many years? God, as long as I can remember. <laughs> it's anyway. like you know, these people never leave because it's such a great family to work for, and it's the same people over and over and over again. 20, 30 years later, you're dealing with the same people. That's pretty that is, rare. That is so cool, you know. It really is. Anyway, that's our show for today for April of 2014. Ow, that hurt. Don't, don't do that. You know, you're not getting any younger. <laughs>